Hi, my name is Dr Jeremy Rogers. I'm one of the emergency department registrars here at Sir Charles Gardner Hospital. So today we're going to talk about humidified high flow nasal cannula systems and discuss how they work, what the indications and contraindications are to high flow therapy and look at how to prescribe and adjust the settings correctly. So high flow nasal cannula represent a therapy which was designed to take advantage of high flows of air and blended oxygen to provide respiratory support. While it can be thought of as a form of non-invasive respiratory support, it has the advantage of using softer, more comfortable silicon-based nasal cannula, which are tolerated better than the tighter fitting masks used with CPAP or BiPAP. At Sir Charles Gardner Hospital, we can deliver humidified high flow through a couple of different systems, including the AirVo2 units, which can be used across the whole hospital, and the Hamilton ventilators, which are used in ED. The utility of these high flow systems is that they can deliver rapid flow rates of air or blended oxygen at between 10 to 60 litres per minute. These rapid flow rates are thought to provide additional benefits um, compared to using conventional oxygen therapy as they decrease the anatomical dead space and can provide some level of positive airway pressure which can both increase the ventilation occurring at an alveolar level. While discussing positive airway pressure relating to high flow nasal cannula, trials have demonstrated that you can probably achieve about one centimetre of water for every 10 litres of flow that you deliver. So this means that if you're trying to deliver some element of positive airway pressure, similar to PEEP, to the patient, you should be using higher flows, such as 40 litres per minute. So which patients may benefit from treatment with high flow nasal cannula? Well, hypoxic respiratory failure is the common indication, and this could be due to an infective process, such as a pneumonia or a viral lower respiratory tract infection. It could be in postoperative hypoxemia, where patients have atelectasis, or it could be with exacerbations of chronic airways diseases, such as asthma or pulmonary fibrosis. In ED, high flow can also be used as an effective pre-intubation, pre-oxygenation strategy. There is some evidence of using high flow nasal cannula in treating, treating hypercapnic respiratory failure, such as with COPD patients. However, this is currently a treatment strategy more reserved for patients that are intolerant of NIV, while the evidence is further explored. So high flow nasal cannula could also be a good treatment strategy for patients with escalating oxygen requirements, particularly where humidification may help with the patient's secretion management and work of breathing. Patients with restrictive lung diseases, chest wall deformities, or neuromuscular diseases such as Guillain-Barre syndrome or motor neuron disease may also be considered for treatment with high flow nasal cannula. And in a palliative setting, we may use high flow nasal cannula with humidification to help with symptom control such as dyspnea. Now the contraindications are generally relatively obvious. If we have a patient with a base of skull fracture or have had surgery or trauma to their nose or aerodigestive tract, then we would not want to deliver high flows of gas through their nose. Because of the positive airway pressure that's created, patients that have a pneumothorax or have had penetrating lung injuries and don't have an intercostal catheter, um, or patients that have significant gastric distension, should not be treated with high flow therapy. So now let's have a closer look at how to prescribe our high flow nasal cannula correctly. So this is the high flow nasal oxygen CPAP and NIV management chart that we use here at our hospital. And this is what all medical staff should use to prescribe their initial high flow nasal cannula order. You need to prescribe a flow rate, the fraction of inspired oxygen and the target patient oxygen saturations. A good starting flow rate for most patients is between 30 to 40 litres per minute, which will mean that your patient gets the benefit of additional flow through this circuit. Remember, this flow just re represents how much gas is moving through the circuit, not the amount of oxygen. You then prescribe a fraction of inspired oxygen, which just gets the machine to blend in enough oxygen to the high flow to achieve the desired proportion of oxygen. Usually you can prescribe the FiO2 to be within a range of 21 to 40% oxygen. This is generally the maximum FiO2 and flow rates that can be delivered on the wards you can also then prescribe a target SpO2, which for most patients is generally 92 to 98%. If you're going to modify a patient, such as with COPD, and ask for them to be targeting 88 to 92%, you also then need to modify their OBS chart. 
Once you've prescribed these parameters, the nursing staff can adjust the FiO2 delivered by the AirVo machine to achieve the target saturations. Finally, if you want to make modifications to your high flow orders, then you can do an updated prescription. For this, you might use this in a weaning regime, where after we've reduced the FiO2 to below 35%, you may then reduce the flow rates to as low as 15 litres to try and wean this patient off their therapy and keep their target saturations in the same range. All right, so now let's have a look at how to use the AirVo unit. So on the AirVo unit, the only setting you really need to adjust on the machine is the flow rate. So if you want to increase the flow, then you do that by using the play button to navigate to the relevant menu, and then you press the up or down button to increase or decrease the flow rate. If the screen is locked at any stage, press the up and down buttons together for three seconds and it should unlock for you. Now you don't input the FiO2 on the AirVo unit. You connect the AirVo to the oxygen outlet on the wall and then you, the AirVo machine will calculate the FiO2 based off that. The oxygen being delivered through the machine and therefore the fraction of inspired oxygen is determined entirely by how much oxygen is coming into it from the wall. So to adjust the FiO2, you need to adjust how much oxygen is coming from the wall outlet and the AirVo unit will then display the subsequent FiO2 that it calculates delivering of what it's delivering to the patient. If you increase the flow from 30 to 40 litres, for instance, the oxygen concentration will now be more diluted by the increased flow of the gas, and you'll therefore need to increase the amount of oxygen coming out of the wall to maintain a similar FiO2. Even though the numbers sound high, it's important to remember that even at 40 litres and 40% FiO2, you're only really supplying about 10 litres of actual oxygen to the patient. The important numbers that we're talking about is the flow of blended air and oxygen. You can even run an AirVo unit entirely on air. You don't need to apply oxygen at all. And therefore the FiO2 will always be 21%. And remember, the AirVo unit doesn't have a battery, so we can't use these to transport patients. And if we did need to move a patient, we'd need to think about using a different method of ventilatory support. Cool. All right, so now let's have a look at our Hamilton ventilators and how we can use high flow nasal therapy on these. To start with, on a Hamilton, to find high flow, you go onto an NIV mode, and then under non-invasive, you've got the option for high flow O2. You can confirm that like that. It's gonna ask you to make sure that you use the correct equipment when you're doing this and you can confirm. Now, the Hamilton ventilators, unlike the AirVo units, will actually let you designate the desired flow rate and your desired FiO2. And the machine will then do all the calculations to pull the correct amount of oxygen from the wall to supply that to the patient. Now, the Hamiltons can also deliver higher flow rates. So when you're choosing your patient, again, you can go to your flow rate. You could turn it up to say 60 liters per minute and then oxygen, fraction inspired oxygen, you can increase all the way up to 100% if you would like. These are important settings that you should remember, particularly in the emergency department where we might be using high flow nasal therapy as our pre-oxygenation strategy prior to intubation. All right, so that is our summary of high flow nasal cannula. I think this is a really exciting piece of equipment that will continue to be used more and more in critical care areas, but also in general medical and surgical areas. But we do know how to use it properly. My take home points would be one, to ensure that you prescribe an appropriate flow rate, such as 30 to 40 liters, to ensure that the patient is getting some of those benefits from washing out their dead space and getting some positive airway pressure. Number two would be to prescribe the FiO2 and the target SpO2 properly to ensure that the high flow therapy can be titrated correctly. And number three would be to understand that this therapy won't cure everything and we still need to be cognizant of the deteriorating or failing patient and to think about escalating to clinical areas such as the respiratory HDU or ICU or escalating to other treatments such as NIV or intubation if those are in line with the patient's treatment goals. Thank you for watching this review of high flow nasal cannula and I hope that this gives some benefit for you guys using high flow nasal cannula in your clinical setting.